What's up everybody, Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video, and in this video we got a breakdown patch 5.07 agent tier list for ranked, so that you know exactly what characters to dominate with ranked, with all the changes that happened, you need to know exactly what characters you should play and pop off with, or characters you should probably avoid going forward, there's a lot we gotta talk about and break down, but first, let me tell you about this insane tool, the Overwolf Valorant Tracker. This is an in-game Valorant Tracker that is going to give you live performance updates while you're playing. You're going to be able to look at your player profile, find your best and worst maps so that you know exactly what you need to focus on, your own personal stats, your most played agent, that you can use to gather important information about what you need to do and how you can improve from here. This is our most exciting sponsor yet because it goes hand in hand with our mission to help you improve. and this is perfect for those of you who want to climb so go check it out right now in the download links below now before we start i want to preface this with saying this is for primarily ranked play we did a previous tier list about pro play i like to alternate back and forth these are the best characters to play ranked and the characters that are better in solo queue are bumped up aka the more teamwork and cohesion you need they're going to be lower on the list versus characters that can do what they need to do by themselves or with actually like you know average or brain dead teammates working with you those are going to be further up the list okay it turns out the ranked ladder having a need for complex coordinated strategy is a recipe for disaster <laughs> but let's jump right into the d tier and unfortunately the character that actually got hurt a lot for ranked play especially for solo queue is ko now riot has already told us that ko is a character that already had a very low win rate across the board even in the high ranks where you would think people would be good with the character and have a high win rate they just didn't because ko unfortunately is a character where his true value comes from playing with your team and coordinating with your team which even in the high ranks we're not seeing it enough to see a high win rate even though ko is a phenomenal character for ranked play and these new changes have pushed him even further in that direction where he's even stronger in a coordinated setting but he's weaker in a solo queue solo carry setting so for those reasons ko is actually going to be worse off and most likely will still have a bad win rate even a worse win rate and for those reasons he's in d tier still could be good in the right hands if you learn to master him and you really try to set up the coordinated strategies he's going to be stronger than before so if you set up in a duo queue or trio queue you learn the pop flashes over the top you learn the lineups and you use him as an initiator not as a hybrid duelist or a duelist you use him as an initiator you could get a ton of value with him and on some maps he could be you know closer to b a even s tier dependent on how good you are at him but for a general ranked tier list he is going to be down in the d tier but the next character that we have in the d tier is cypher and even though cypher is a great character he's unfortunately a little bit underpowered and we've been talking about how he needs a buff we've talked about the buff riot has talked about the buff everyone wants a buff every cypher man wants a buff pretty much it's a universal character that everyone wants buff and he's still not buffed so i gotta keep putting him in the d tier until he gets freaking buffed if i don't Riot might change their minds. You know that Riot has stated before that they buff and change things based on community perception. So we got to keep it up, man. The narrative is Cypher is trash. Don't change the narrative. Let's get this boy buffed. But all joking aside, Cypher does have maps that he can work on. I think he's fine on Fracture. I think he can be played on Pearl. But there are just so many really powerful options. And it's pretty hard for me to suggest playing Cypher over any of the other ones. Even if you're a Sentinel main, there's better options on nearly every map. Next up, we gotta talk about the C tier. These are characters that are good if you are not playing them in solo queue. These are characters that would be B or A tier if you're playing them in duo queue or trio queue. You're playing them with a teammate, but if you're playing by yourself, it's gonna be hard to make these characters work. First off is Astra. Astra is pretty hard to make work, and I do think that she's good on Pearl in particular. We see the most amount of play for her on Pearl, but on every other map, you don't really want to play her unless you have a dual partner or even a trio that is working well with you because you want to play off your utility. You don't want to just try to follow up on everything yourself and you're going to have e an easier time having solo queue impact with another dome smoker like Omen, for instance. Next up is C tier. We have Breach. Now, statistically, Breach has a low win rate unless you're stacking with a three plus stack, according to Riot. And the thing about Breach is that he needs a lot of things to go right. You need to play Breach on a map that he's good. There's several maps that he's good. He's actually becoming better and better. But more importantly than that, you need an aggressive character that is going to take advantage of your setups and your stuns because you can't do it yourself. 
So you need to not only play on a composition that has someone that can do that, like a Neon for instance, you also have to hope and pray that that random person will actually coordinate with you, which might not always be the case. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. If you're doing a duo queue situation, then he's fantastic. But if you're solo queuing and locking breach, even if you're playing the right map and you got a Neon on your team, there's no guarantees that things will go right if no one's coordinating with you or maybe they're coordinating with you incorrectly because they don't know your timing. You don't have any synergy set with each other. There's a lot of problems that can happen, and I think that Breach is not a great solo queue choice, so that's why he's down here. Last off, we got to talk about Sky, and Sky did receive one buff in the fact that her flash now doesn't get destroyed, so she can gather information a lot more consistent, and she can set up flashes for her teammates a lot more consistently as well, but as a solo, duelist, hybrid, someone that wants to make plays herself, she's a lot worse than she was before. Because the change to where she now pulls out her weapon slower, just like KO did, and also the flashes scale with time, so now she's not going to be able to kill multiple targets if she does a quick flash, and if she only partially blinds them, they're going to get unblinded very, very quickly. Sky is going to have a lot harder time making these aggressive duelist-esque plays now, because her flashes are much more for coordination and teamwork rather than for solo carry and solo playmaking ability. And I think that was one of the best parts about Sky, in ranked at least, is that she could do both. She could set up and she could follow through herself or make plays herself. But now she's better at setting up, but much worse at making players herself, which means that she's better with more coordination. And in pro play, she's probably gonna be better. And if you're playing in a stack or people that know how to play around you, she's gonna be better. But by herself, she's gonna be worse. So that's why she's down here. You got that duo trio, you're you're trying to synergize and you're playing pixel synergize and you're playing off each other, then she's gonna be a lot better, but otherwise she's gonna stay down here. Next up, we gotta talk about B tier characters. These are characters that are legitimately really powerful. There might be some better options, but if you master these characters, you might be able to get even more value than some of the better options. First off is Brimstone. Statistically has a really high win rate across the board, and even in the highest ranks, he has a really, really high win rate, and he has an even higher win rate when you're not playing him in solo queue. Brimstone is what I would call one of the most reliable characters. He's very consistent. He's very good at bringing a stable amount of value to the table, and I think he's also a little bit underrated. I know he's not as flashy, but he carries silently a lot of the time. Stim Beacon is a very, very great ability for rushes, for rotation. Having the ability to smoke three points is phenomenal on certain maps like for instance on maps like pearl if you want to play them on pearl or if you want to have those three smokes all at once in a number of different situations it's really flexible like playing brimstone when you're trying to play fracture he's very very good when omen would kind of be lacking in one of those smokes like if you're trying to go onto the a site you can't smoke connector drop and then the zipped window you would have to leave one of them open if you're playing omen for instance so brim is really good on maps like that and then I think if you're playing in a duo queue and you fill to Brimstone, for instance, you're bringing a very, very strong form of reliability that can enable your duo partner to, you know, kind of be free and play their best. And I think that probably aids to the fact that Brimstone has a really good duo queue and stack queue win rate. Next up, we got to talk about Killjoy. Killjoy has maps that she's really good on. Maps like Ascent, for instance, Killjoy is phenomenal on. And I do think that in ranked Q, the lower in rank you go, the better and better Killjoy becomes. She's really, really annoying to deal with if you're not playing against people that are disciplined against her, if you're not really communicating. Like, how many times have you, just in your games, like, lost a push because Killjoy had a setup, and then maybe you don't push that point, and then your options are limited, and maybe not everyone in your team is talking, so it's hard to coordinate how to bait out her utility or destroy her utility or whatever the case may be. And she just becomes a nightmare to deal with. And then she gets ultimate for retake. There's just like a cascade effect with Kildra that can be really annoying to play with. She's pretty punishing for making mistakes. But unfortunately, she is a little bit behind in the power level department compared to some of her Sentinel counterparts. So that's why she's only in B tier, even though she's a really good character. Now, the next two in the B tier is Neon and Yoru. Now, Neon, let's first talk about her. Neon's really, really good and is the character that has a very high win rate as players master the character according to Riot. So Neon is really good if you master her, but I don't really think you should be playing Neon unless you put in the time 
to learn a lot of her techs. She has a lot of crazy techs as far as sliding backwards, jump sliding left, right, learning how to stun properly in default setups, learning how to properly execute onto a site using your utility, using your slide. These are things that you should actually learn. If you're gonna play the character and just like mindlessly run it down, you're not gonna get anywhere near the value that you should be. And you might as well just play a character like Phoenix or a character like Raze or a character like Reyna. Don't play Neon unless you're gonna actually put the time and effort into mastering the character's kit. Otherwise, you're just leaving a ton of value on the table for no reason. Now, as far as Yoru's concerned, Yoru actually got a buff. His flash gets a whole 0.25 second increase in flash time. And he was already good. He already had a really high win rate with players that could master him, according to Riot. And I do think that Yoru is one of the best solo carry characters if you can master the character. Another one of those characters, though, that if you're not going to put the time and effort into learning how to properly use the character and master the character, then you're really not doing yourself a great service. Because I have described this before, but Neon and Yoru have an exponential scale of impact, as in as you master the character, your win rate exponentially increases. As for per before, it's like much lower as opposed to a lot of other characters that have a linear increase. As you get better, your win rate will linearly increase according to how good you're getting. But with characters like Neon and Yoru, it's like your win rate is really bad until you get to a certain mastery over the agents. And then your win rate is like really, really good. So that is like the turning point, I would say. And it's it's uh characters that you will get rewarded if you grind them and get good with them but are you willing to do that and if not i would not play them next off in a tier these are characters that are really really strong you're going to see these characters a lot in your games these characters have good win rates and i would suggest these agents for this patch first off we got to talk about phoenix i've been having a lot of personal success on phoenix i know that phoenix has a very high win rate according to riot i know i keep saying that but we learned a little bit of data from riot and i love to just talk about it and phoenix has a high win rate and i've been loving phoenix as a character in solo queue because i feel like i don't have to rely on my teammates for anything if if there's an enemy that is stuck in cubby or Let's say, hypothetically, I'm playing a set and I think an enemy might be in wine. I don't have to talk with my teammates, somehow convince them to check wine. And then if there's no one in wine, they don't like that they wasted their ability. Whatever, I can just check it based on my own intuition. If I think that there could be an enemy around the corner, I can flash it and check it and get a free kill if they're there. If they're not, no harm, no foul. If my smoker dies because he's an idiot and he's lurking or whatever, I can wall onto point, push in, flash in myself. And... If I want to just brute force a point, I can ult. I mean, there's just like a lot of flexibility with this character and I just don't need anybody. I could still work with my team, sure. And I'm a really, really great entry for my team. But at the end of the day, I don't need my team to do all these little things that normally I would have to, you know, either not do or talk with my teammates to do. And those that doesn't always work, especially if you're someone like me who just plays like at 3 a.m., no one's freaking talking and uh yeah good luck coordinating anything <laughs> at that time of night but the next character that we actually got to talk about is omen omen is a very very good carry smoke character and one of the big reasons that is is because omen can smoke from really far away he can hypothetically do his job and also pull off a play at the same time that's why omens are really great at lurking and lurking late mid we see that with a lot of pro players and it's just a really powerful strategy like let's say you're playing haven you could smoke for your team on a you could even flash them in short if you want to and then you could rotate late mid cut off enemies on the flank cut off enemies that are rotating make a play that way there's a lot of different things you could do you can also teleport over trips if enemies have already passed by you could teleport over chamber trips there's a lot of ways that an omen can get a whole bunch of extra value in addition to doing his job, which just makes him amazing for solo queue and even duo queue. So I would highly suggest omen. I think he's a great character to have in your pocket. Of course, he can't be the only controller you play, but he can definitely be the main one you play. Next up, we got to talk about Sage. Sage, according to Riot, haha, catchphrase of the day, has a very high win rate at every rank, literally every rank. Sage is one of the most picked and has a very high win rate, which is crazy because a lot of people think that Sage is weak. Sage is really, really great, and there's some maps that he's, she's phenomenal on, right? Maps like Icebox. But even in general, Sage just brings a ton of value with her res, her slows. I think her wall is one of the most versatile abilities. You can use it 
to make a proactive play, you could use it to delay a push, you could use it to counter an ultimate, you could use it to defuse. There's so many different things that you could use wall for. I just think it's a really, really great ability to have. That ultimate is always fire. And uh, Sage is a really, really great character. I think that she brings a good amount of value to every team composition, no matter what. Next off, we got to talk about Sova. And Sova is a character that I know has been kind of pushed down a little bit, right? Because of Fade. But... He's still great. There are maps that are still favored to Sova, like Breeze, like Ascent. And there are a whole bunch of other maps that you can play both Sova and Fade. And a Sova that is really, really good can make him work in every situation. He's a character that improves in win rate directly linear to your improvement with the character. He's a character that really feels rewarding to learn things on. You learn one thing and you can use it right away and you get value with it right away and you just want to learn and learn and learn he's like a character that just rewards you for learning and he feels really satisfying to master and play and i do think that he also improves your game sense really really highly playing this character and he's great he's gonna win you a lot of games if you get good with him he's gonna climb you all the way to immortal if you get good with him so there's no reason to not play this character a lot and love him. Last off in the A tier, we have Jet. Jet is a character that is still phenomenal. She's still very, very strong. And especially in ranked and solo queue, she does everything you need to just carry and pop off. She's a character that gets to play these off angles, challenge, even op if she wants to, and dash away if you time it right, if you basically gamble or use your game sense to basically correctly assess where an enemy is going to go. You can also use her knives to get a ton of value on eco rounds and she can also dash in aggressively and entry as well there's a lot of flexibility in this character and any character that gets to basically have a quote unquote get out of jail free card is a character that's automatically going to be able to get more favorable duels get more kills and have more potential pick based impact which is always good for solo queue because you know when in doubt, when no plan is working, killing everyone always works. So, <laughs> but last off, we got to talk about the S tier. These are characters that are definitely defining the meta. They're very, very strong. Some of them are slated to get nerfs, but until they do, you can abuse them all you want. And at the bottom of the list, we have Raze. Raze is great. I know that one of her best maps split has left, but she's still very good on Pearl. And there's a lot of maps that she's very good on. I think only a couple like Breeze, she's not the best on. But the thing about Rays is that because of her mobility and because of a lot of the potential skill ceiling that you can access on the character, she's a really, really great character to just bring into a game and you have tons of opportunities to outplay people, outskill people. And she does a very unique thing with all the area denial that she has, all the damage-based AoE she has. Rays is just a really, really strong character in the meta, and I think that she has been aging really well in Valor, and I think she's only priced to age even better as the game goes on. Next off, we gotta talk about Viper. Viper, right now, is the only line smoker in the game, which means she's absolutely necessary on some maps. She's pretty much a, a have to play on Breeze, and there are a number of maps that she's really good on, or you could play double controller with her on, like Pearl, for instance, even Fracture. Viper's a character that is really, really needed, and unfortunately, until there's another character that can take her spot and do what she does in the same way that Fade and Silver are fighting each other, Viper will stay in this S tier. And uh, we do know that the next character that's coming out, the mage based character, is someone that is going to compete directly with Viper. So we'll just have to wait and see what that is and when that happens. But until then, you should learn Viper if you're a controller main. And uh, even if you're not, learning to flex to Viper is going to get you a lot of wins where otherwise you would have basically a very little chance to win or it'd be very hard. Next off in the S tier, we have Reyna. Yes, Reyna. But this is for ranked play, especially because she's so good in solo queue. But with her new changes, she can swing her flashes faster now because she whips out her gun faster. And while they don't stick around as long, they blind from max distance. That means you could even play Reyna on maps like Breeze and blind an op. And that makes Reyna one of the best op counters in the game. Because that was one of the things that was preventing her from being a good op counter before, is the fact that her blind didn't reach max distance. And it's interesting because the character directly above her is Chamber, right? Chamber is also in the S tier. While he is slated to get nerfs at some point, we don't know when that will be. Reyna and Chamber are basically 
two contrarian sides, right? Chamber is like the opera. He's the op abuser. He's the op god. He creates an op. And Reyna is the purebred rifler through and through. And they are fighting each other. You know, Reyna now is a kind of a counter to Chamber in a way. And that probably makes her a lot better because Chamber and Reyna are probably in like a ton of your games. Reyna's going to be seen, seeing even more play, unfortunately, or fortunately. At least you won't get opt nearly as much. I think a good Reyna is going to be able to force Chamber to use that teleporter, force him off the angles. And uh, it's going to be a very interesting dynamic. But all in all, both these characters are really, really strong. Expect to see them a lot. Learn how to play against them or learn how to play them because they will be in your ranked games. I almost guarantee it. And the last character that we got to talk about at the top of the S tier is Fade. Fade is just way too damn strong right now. I know that she has nerfs slated, but they could be forever from now. We have no idea. Her dog is just too good at punishing people and forcing people out. You don't want to die to a judge ever. You don't want to die to someone just holding an angle, waiting for you to peek. You want to have engagements be clean and on your terms. Fade gets to do all those things. You get to force an enemy to play on your terms. They can never push up aggressively. They can never hold or challenge a close angle. They can never sit somewhere close with the shotgun. And then when you want to engage properly, you get to engage on your terms and then use your eye to gather information and have a much cleaner execute. So the whole play pattern of Fade basically creates a situation where you get to engage properly on your terms and you get to enable that even better. It forces enemies to play fair and then it gives you an advantage in that fair play. It's it's really just like a sight to behold. It's actually kind of beautiful, but a little bit busted because it, it just feels really frustrating sometimes to play against a really good fade with a really good execute by the enemy team. And uh, she might be a little bit too strong, but for now, if you like the character, play the character, win with the character. And if you are not a Fade main, you need to learn how to properly play against Fade. Beware of the eye, beware of the dog, beware of the ult, and uh, good luck out there, boys. But uh, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time.